This is how bad things have now got. In the capital Delhi, oxygen is in short supply or has run out altogether. Daily infection numbers have soared to a world record of over 330,000, bringing with it the grim reality of a rapidly rising death toll. Contributing to the spread, a new virus variant. Today, the UK government placed India on its red list, effectively banning travel to and from the country. For those in the UK with loved ones in India, watching from abroad is agonizing. When, you, when you're saying family, you know, these are people who will have two generations who are, you know, living in India. And currently the situation is such that in some states, at least one in every three Indians is diagnosed with COVID. This is a fragile health system at breaking point. Hospitals are full. Outside, relatives desperate for their loved ones to be treated, only for some to be turned away. Meanwhile, near Mumbai, another tragedy, as 13 COVID patients died after a fire broke out at an intensive care unit. But despite the ever-worsening situation, mass gatherings, including religious festivals and election rallies, have continued, sparking criticism from some. At the end of the day, it's not about which religious festival or which election is going on. It's about humanity. Because at the end of the day, if there aren't going to be any people to celebrate festivals, there aren't going to be people able enough to vote, then what is the point of having faith? And what is the point of having a democracy if people do not simply care about humanity and about each other? While some regional lockdowns have now been reimposed, India's rapid spread is an urgent reminder for the UK not to let its guard down. 132 cases of the virus variant, first identified in India, have been found in the UK. And the pandemic isn't over until all countries have COVID under control. Helena Humphrey, Five News.